Hey guys, so today I want to show you how to make a glass jar with liquid inside of it. It's actually not that hard as one would think, but let's go ahead and get started. So what you're going to do is first delete the sphere. Make sure you are on map cap and that your perspective is orthographic. Then we're going to go here press add and go to the lathe tool. I hope I'm still pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyways, so this you can just draw on one side and it's going to create the same thing on that side. So let's get rid of that and let's make a jar. So a jar kind of like that and then down and up. So no, oh. Now we can fix how the jar looks by moving these points on the object. So let's get rid of that one. I'm going to move this one a little bit that way. Oops, let's make sure it's right in the front. And you can always add a couple more if you want to. This one's kind of giving potion jar, but I kind of want to make it a little bit different, like more of a jam jar maybe. And yeah, there you go. There that you could add a little bit more points to make it a bit more refined, as you can see. And then for the jar to open, let's see, I'm pretty sure you want to have a hole. So go back to the front view. And then you're gonna add that one. Do you hear my cat? I am so sorry. What is happening here? What is this? Hold on. Let me see. Oh, I see. Uh, this you want to keep closed because you don't want the hole at the bottom because the jars usually don't have holes on the bottom. Why am I upside down? Okay, there. So let's put that back. That is closed now. Fix this up a little bit more. Up. You're actually gonna bring this down like that. Bring another point. There we go. You're just gonna outline this. Oops. So that it looks kind of like that. See? And it doesn't have to look like this. It can look however you would like your jar to look like. So, bring that up a little bit. There you go. A jar. Which this was less. There we go. Better. Bring that to here. There. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. But I can't really see that. There we go. And there is your jar. So let's go ahead and hit validate. Let's check the wire out by uh, pressing the wire right here. Just voxel remesh. Let's see how many. That's better. I'm actually going to remesh it up to around 200. So remesh that. You're going to open your tools. It might look a little different than mine because I have extra tools and I like this layout the best. So I'm going to use this smooth tool. I'm just going to make it real big. Maybe put the intensity down a little bit. And just smooth it out and don't forget to save because you don't want oops, it to be deleted pretty sure I need a new one. Oh, there we go I think I pressed save as. I was a little confused. Oh my gosh. Save. 
smooth out the bottom and the sides. Bring the intensity up. The more, the higher the voxel remesh is, like the thicker the clay is, kind of like how much you would actually be working with like in real life. So it's not as thin, I guess you could say. Smooth that out in there. All right. So go back to the front view and here is our item. You can see it right here. Let's rename it to the jar or just jar, whatever you want to call it. Then we're actually going to go back to lit PBR. And then close that. We want this to be glossy and it's already painted. So let's just paint all again. And we're actually going to go to refraction and there is your clear jar. Perfect, right? Now let's put something in the jar. The front view. Let's add and then add a sphere. And let's change the color to the gold color. And if you hear my cat, they're sneezing. So just be warned. There you go. Let's open our tools and go to the gizmo tool. The gizmo tool, you can change the shape by putting it bigger, making it smaller. And we want to make it smaller so it fits in the jar. Now you see all these like refractions, click on the jar, go back to material, and you can change the amount of reflection, the index of refraction. So I like a low refraction to be honest. And I think I have to go inside the jar and smooth out these sides and that's what the issue is. So let's go back to smooth. Let's just smooth out inside of the jar. It's a little hard because it's you actually have to hit the inside of the jar. It's kind of hard to do that when there's sides in the way. So just do the best you can. You can make it really big. And you can actually turn on the symmetry for Y and Z so it's hitting multiple things once. It will slow down your iPad maybe a little bit. That's okay. Let's try and get this side. So actually, while we're here, I like the way the jar looks. So I'm going to do a quad remesh so there's less vertices or, and it's not doing too much on the iPad, on the RAM. So let's bring it down to that number, 72K. So it's, we're at 209K right now. It's kind of a lot. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Let's see. Why did it do that? Symmetry, let's turn the symmetry off and see what happens. It just takes a second. This is an add-on, so you do have to pay, that, and that worked, and you do have to pay for the quad remesher, but it's definitely worth it, I think. So you can see that it's dark. That's not actually how it looks like. It's just because you have this object selected. So let's go back to Gizmo. Then let's go for the inside of the jar. And this is gonna be honey, because that's what I'm choosing today. Now we can make it wider. And I did turn for the jar, go back to the jar. I did turn the index of refraction down. So if I bring it up, you can see like that it like makes the insides look so crazy and so let's leave it low for now and just like let's try and fill the jar up a little bit so we don't want it to hit the outside like that we want to keep it like as it's inside the jar so that's pretty close maybe raise it up a little bit front back and let's validate that and then go back to our tools hit the move tool i'm gonna make it a little bit the size of the brush bigger, but turn the intensity down to 17%. It doesn't have to be that. And then I'm going to just something you're used to or can work with. I'm actually going to turn symmetry off because liquid is not symmetrical. I'm just going to mess and fill in the jar. Turn that up a little bit. Back up a little bit.
Just mess around with it, change, get more specific with your brush, making it larger or smaller. Same with the intensity. Just bring it out. And you can just do whatever you want with it. There's no rules. Let's go back to the front view. Bring it up a little bit. Bring this that way. Bring it down. I know, I'm working kind of funky. It's upside down, inside out. <laughs> And yours might not look like this. So yes, there's my honey. At least for the inside. Just messing around. Add dips in it. Now this doesn't have to be glossy. You don't have to make it glossy. Smooth it out a little bit if you want to. Oops. And the only thing is you can't really get to that unless you look if you select it from the menu or the top view because otherwise you'll be always hitting the jar. So let's smooth out the bottom a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And now I'll go back to the jar materials and I'm gonna actually oops bring up the index of refraction. Oh maybe not. Let's do that and see what happens when I hit the liquid. Make it a little smaller. All those different angles. Now another thing I like to do, go back to the jar. Let's go back to matte cap because it's just a little bit easier to see. There, you can see the inside it. Hit here, let's see the wire, and go to masking tool. So I'm gonna make this really small. Hopefully, let's see how it looks. Okay. Let's turn the wire off. Make our brush really tiny. And we're actually, since that looks so pixelated, we're gonna voxel remesh again, so I might as well kept it at what it was. And it doesn't have to be perfect, so it's around 200. Now look how smooth that is. So what you're, oops. You have to be careful, because when you're drawing like this, and you can still see, it will draw on both sides, so like, but that's not how you want it. So, let's start here. I'm just gonna draw some. I'm gonna draw on some honey drip. I'm gonna go in like that, and it doesn't have to look like that. This. Actually, I don't want it to hit the inside, so hit unmask. You can erase. I hit it again to go back into drawing it. So there's one. Let's make it a little bit. There's one, and then maybe something like that. Now I'm not sure if I, I'm going to keep this, but I just wanted to show you guys wanted to add a little bit more detail if you're making honey or something like that like that has would have some residue on the side jam even peanut butter all right it's kind of funky looking <laughs> I don't know if I like that but we're just oops I inverted it so just press invert again maybe some just chilling No. <laughs> Anyways, so hit the little shield with the brush on it. And you can make sure it's only on plus for this. And you can see how the height would be. So I'm going to keep it pretty thick there. And then you're going to hit extract. Make sure it's on shell. And oops, and keep that all the same, whatever that is down there. So, and then you just hit extract. 
And then you got your drip. Clear all, make sure you're hitting one of those. Go to move, smooth and you can smooth it out if there's anything kind of like right here. I don't like that. Smooth that out. That looks pretty good. And then you're going to go to your move tool, bring down the intensity. You can bring the radius up for this and you can just push into the spots that you would like and you can actually move it around like if you wanted to make it look a little different like that or something like that. I'm going to keep it like this and move that in. Like that. Turn the pixel down to get a little bit more specific. Specific. What did I say? Make it a little bigger. Just move it a little. More like it's on the jar because it, it did extract, so it's like kind of like above it, and that's not really what I want. You can do whatever you want. It's your art. This is just what I want it to look like. There we go. All right, so let's, there. So let's go back to lit PBR. And you can see that it's clear because what we extracted from was that. So let's turn it. Oh, so that's for that, the jar again. Is that. But let's go to the extraction part and paint all. And you can see it's still clear. And that's kind of cool too because that's more like honey. Because honey is trans slightly translucent. But if you don't want it to be translucent, you can go to the materials and go back to opaque. And then you can see that it's through. The jar. And you can also, if you don't want a clear jar, you can paint it, go back to white. I believe you turn the roughness up. See that? It kind of makes it like a frosted jar. And that's how you can make a jar with honey or whatever you want inside. Ooh, fix this up. Remember to turn off. You don't want to paint, so let's turn this. In stroke painting, you turn it off. So when you move something, it would go like that. And then you can see the lines. I think that's what I it was getting a little funky. So let's go back to the honey. We're already on the move tool. I'm gonna move it so I can so it fits in the jar a little bit better. And I'm actually gonna go back to the jar, <laughs> turn the roughness down. And there's the honey. Let's go to the turn table. There you go. Honey in a jar. If you like this video, check out my other videos. This is my first tutorial, so let me know what I can improve on. What would you want to see? If you have any questions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that this is without any lights actually, so let's just add a light for fun. Go to the gizmo tool. I like to reset it every time and then, so I know exactly where to start from. Light. Let's go to the front view. Front view to the right. Let's bring it out. Yeah. Oh. It's the only thing I hate that the, you can't really see the light. If you accidentally click off of it, and let's change it to a little bit more. Yeah, oh, too intense, I think. There we go. And then let's add another light. Oops. It's called light two. I like to turn only one shadow on. I don't know. It's just what I like to do. 
that you can mess around with any of the lights. And I'm actually going to make this blue or something, purple maybe. I love purple lights. And then I'm actually going to change this light to a spotlight. I do love spotlights for some reason. See, I'm always losing it. Make that way. Why is it? Spotlights I like a little bit above. There we go. I'm gonna change the cone angle, that's why I couldn't see anything. It's like Let's turn the intensity down because that's a little too intense. Raise it up. Oops. And then add one more light for now. This, this was supposed to be pretty simple. I was just like, can't help myself. Just bring a light from below. render look post process I have old settings on here so let's just change it to standard and there we go oops you can see all the light refracting off of it and if you wanted to take a screenshot let's close this Go to the save, let's save it just in case. And then export PNG. And I just have it to screen so you can crop it or whatever later. And I have 188. I'll show you after it renders. It's like frames, I believe. And there you go. And then you would just add that and save it to your files or wherever. And it's a clean photo, or a PNG, it's not a photo. And you can take different angles. But yeah, I have my quality settings to 188 max frame sampling. And you can read it in yours. And then we went in 0.25. And then of course you can mess around with the settings in here if you want refract. Reflection, you can turn that off. Global illumination, ambulant occlusion, usually like all those on. I usually have depth of field off. Bloom is usually lower than I want, but. And you can mess with a lot of this stuff. I love chrome, chrome chromatic aberration, all that things. Sharpness I usually have off, but recently I have been using it. But yeah, so check out my other videos if you enjoyed this one. Hopefully I can bring some more tutorials that are easy to comprehend and that aren't too hard. And I'll leave a comment below on what I can improve on, what you want to see, or anything like that. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye!